Hey YouTube, how's it going? Back with a very overdue update. It's been like a year since uh, we posted a video. And this is my new to me GNT 800 because apparently I'm obsessed with these things. So this Bean still has the Yukon, which we're gonna have to do an update of that on that truck. A lot of shit's happened to that. But this is my one owner 06 Escalade that I picked up from a guy that bought it down in Florida. Drove it back and forth for so he was a Canadian snowbird, basically. So he's lives in Canada. So screw it, I'm not staying here when it's cold. Old guy moved uh, and would move down to Florida for the winter. Probably had a place. So what we've done since: three-inch Amazon lift kit, three-inch. It's got one and three-quarter inch spacers. I'll post a picture of how the truck looked when I first bought it, right here. I got these 20s back from Beans. I bought them from him. Don't worry, he didn't give me free shit. Um, got 33 and a half inch Toyo Open Country AT2s on this thing. Exhaust tip is from the previous owner, whatever. Um, he was nice enough to leave the stock taillights in the back of the truck when I bought it. Got uh, the dirty old CB whip on the back of this thing with the spring. Don't mind the chrome fuel door. Took the chrome door moldings off other than that beyond my family and i basically moving into this thing completely oh, i did all the led interior lights it's uh it's pretty clean don't mind my crutch it's just in there from my physio has been helping out i broke my ankle back in february there's a picture of that and uh this is uh basically the cleanest escalade that i could gmt 800 suv that i could find for less than 10 grand thanks covid pricing so we're doing we've got some led cube lights on it these ones will be moving behind the grill um i got another set from oxbeam well, i bought them i'm not sponsored obviously we can be we'll take sponsorships yes oxbeam please sponsor us <laughs> somebody there's a sticker your stickers on the fridge yeah there you go um tim hortons needs to sponsor us because we always buy we always oh. wrench with timmy's coffee because we're dads we only get to do this shit when it's nighttime so you'll notice a lot of our videos it's dark out because of that our kids are sleeping in bed <laughs> the baby monitor is playing in the background so baby monitor yeah. literally on the wall so yeah that's basically this thing why is it here getting worked on again you may ask because <coughs> it's a gmt 800 that's a gmt 800 and it <laughs> needs front end parts specifically <laughs> this time the idler and Pittman arms are on their way out they're about to leave the chat and uh, before it puts us in a ditch and it lives up to my wife's nickname of the Death Scalade, we got to get those. We got to get those replaced. So we'll toss them up, toss the truck up on the ramps, and uh, we'll get going Always on that. Swear some passwords. Pro most likely. Speaking of the Yukon. Can he make it? Oh! So just wiggle the wheel side by side to side there and we're going to let everybody kind of bask in the glory that is the play that has developed in this steering here, Jesse. Okay, keep going a little bit. Okay, no, hit it as hard. Just lightly. Oh yeah, I can see it. I'll, I'll include the video that I took the other day when I had the one corner jacked up. Yeah. It's like it was bad. The wheel was basically moving an inch in either direction, back and forth.
Okay, we'll let uh, we'll zip all that shit off of there. And... Did you buy the bracket with your eye The bracket? No. I... Oh, maybe that's why it was that expensive. All right, on. So Beans is just leaving. It's like two hours later. Jesse is uh, hard at work on the front end parts. Thank God I didn't try to do this in my own driveway, man. Oh God, no. Got the new, uh, got the new light cubes on. That's what I contributed to tonight's workload. Hey, you've and, been handing me tools. Yeah, I like to hand tools. They seem okay. We'll aim them. We'll, when we go get Atlanta some smokes, we'll uh, we'll aim it a little bit better and see if they work. Then uh, one of these days I'll probably, in the daylight, believe it or not, I'll fucking mount those. Uh, cubes behind the grill and clearly the guy who engineered this tool is no fucking good at engineering so we're gonna zip the uh these sharp corners off here so it doesn't tear the boot on the freaking steering box that might help it good job not getting your thumbs caught in that thing oh dude i open and close these so many of these every day <laughs> dude it's freaking yeah Much better. That's a big improvement right there. Much better. Might actually slide in easier for you. I'm gonna turn it around, maybe cut this edge a bit. Right there. Might as well. Uh, no. That's the edge that the pitman arm yeah, pulls Yeah, that's off. your pulling edge. I wouldn't cut yeah. that. Yeah, but good. just by taking those sharp corners off though, it'll, it should slide in a lot easier though, catching the boot and stuff. Yeah. Okay, quick update. Uh, pitman arm one. Jesse and the Pitman Arm Puller Zero. So this is a, a PSA to everybody to not buy cheap OEM product tools from Part Source and expect them to hold up to uh, Northern Ontario stuckness. That that thing is on there. So plan has changed. We're gonna take the whole steering. Well, I say we, but we're gonna take the we're gonna take the whole steering box out, put it on the workbench, and. Uh, Go from there. We're going to cut that sucker off with a freaking grinder if we have to. In the OEM Plus tools defense, I did have a snap on impact snap on, on it. Half inch impact, <laughs> impact. So, a couple hundred foot pounds but, of torque worth of Ugga Duggas on that sucker, yeah. and she just. Uh, no, she's a tire snap on impact. She was probably 600 okay. foot pounds, 500, 600, uh, 600 foot pounds. But I had my half inch breaker bar on it. And uh, it started spreading more and it slid off. And at that point, it's cast. She it's, gave up the once ghost. Once she start, starts moving, it just keeps moving. So we ordered, uh, well, I ordered because I feel bad because I bought that one and it broke. And it seems like Jesse keeps having to work on my shit that, that's fucked up. So I ordered I like him a. Uh, mechanic. Yeah, <laughs> you offered. Um, I do. I do keep offering. I do. I did call at least one mechanic shop to see if they could do it. Because I knew it was a shit job. But I did order a, an OTC brand forged puller off of Amazon. Should be here on Saturday. But we don't want to be working on this on Saturday. Because it's Tuesday right now. And uh, I'd really like to have my beater back. I'm out of town for the next uh, three days for work. I'm so not back till Friday. It would legit just be sitting here for three days doing fuck all. Mm -hmm. But I mean, worst case Ontario... It could. I still have two vehicles in the driveway that run perfectly fine. But far. we are going to remove the steering box because car steering lines look fairly nice. And I, I think I could finesse. So these ones are looking okay. This is a Florida truck with four winters on it. So. so I'll spray some happiness to it. Steering shaft and the thing's pretty much out. So we're going to take it out so I can play with it and have fun with it on the bench and try and take it off there. Cause I've, I've, Fingers crossed this will work. We'll put the fucking heat to it too if we got it. This is what you get when you're trying to get a high pressure line off a steering box and you are uh, you don't quite have enough torque on your modified open end wrench. <laughs> it's, uh, it works great for tightening. Well, I've always wondered what... Oh, for tightening, I'm sure. I've always wondered what the hell crow's foot sockets are for. Well, actually, I have, there's another end to this. I have the other half too, but we use with this end to be tightened up if you have to get to the back 
pressure line on these pumps. There's no room in the back of the pump. So you cut the half and you have it for so you can get in there. And then, and then you, you use, use the other half of the wrench. For the other top side, so you cut a slit Friggin so you can run your line. Smart. This you only do this when you don't change the line. Usually if you oh. change the line, you cut it, but it's not gonna If I need a crow's, now I might actually buy a set of crow's feet. Uh, feet I guess you want to you call this them. Works. Crow's foot, if anybody don't know what a crow's foot is. Well, we don't need to be that long, but. But I mean, look at how convenient it is. It's just right up here. Exactly. And now that it's cracked loose. Nice. Best part is you didn't punch yourself in the face or crack your knuckles on anything because the ratchet's up out of the engine bay. Because of my three foot long extension. There you go. Come on, pass me, Mike. That is a, a Bubblegum Customs life hack moment right there. Yeah. Uh, got the steering box out. Jesse didn't even have to swear once. Proud of him. So now, I didn't even bother putting the camera on the tripod for this one. This is what we're having an issue with. Seems to be pretty seized on the, that spline shaft. Jesse's just trying to find something to plug the hole for the high pressure, for the high pressure line. I think I'm just gonna stuff my rag in. And it's about to be a shop rag. I can't find anything with that. Screw it. Do what we gotta do. Update on the situation, the situation. Um, we got the pitman arm off. Took a lot of grinding and Jesse now has a new ornament for the wall. Yeah, that's a chisel. So basically we cut it as close as we felt comfortable to the splines and we hammered that chisel in. It broke the casting and spread it open just enough that we got it off. Spine's nice and clean. Yeah, we didn't, uh, we didn't touch it. Oh yeah, fucking mint. I'm just gonna clean them up. Get all the gunk out of it. Put some friggin' anti seize on it. Uh, we'll put so we're gonna grease it. Yeah. I'm gonna grease the hell out of it. And then reinstall and go get your wife some cigarettes. And that's some, some fucking McDonald's, but some fucking Mickey D's. Because it is what, like 1.30 in the morning? <laughs> Quarter after two. Oh fuck. fuck so this job took oh my god, that's bright as hell. Oh, wrong way on the wheel. Um so this job took what like three hours longer than we thought it was going to? So what yeah. happens with these jobs? It's if I you'll should. get that on these big jobs. Yeah. Yeah, I was expecting it, or not expecting it, but, yeah. We always kind of expect it to happen. It is, after all, a 17-year-old truck. We got it done. Well, not done yet. Took a, well, we got that done. We got, now it's reassembly, and you have ATF, right, that we can throw in there for power strength fluid? I think so. I didn't check. <laughs> we'll be right back with the verdict on that one. <laughs> Well, you're probably wondering where the truck went, but... Scrapyard. <laughs> Just about, honestly, but... Got it all done. Um, a lot of swearing, a lot of cursing, getting everything back together, believe it or not. The truck's outside. It's back together. Drives better than it ever has since I've owned it. And we even aimed the ditch lights, and they are a huge improvement over the little spots that I had before. <laughs> so we aimed them while driving. Yeah, we aimed them while driving. <laughs> Very conveniently located on the hood. So, uh, 
yeah, like I said, all back together. Ditch lights are aimed. Doesn't try to kill me when I hit bumps. Doesn't try to steer all by itself when I hit the gas anymore. No, job well done. Now the uh, the next trick is to take the uh, cube lights that I had on the ditch lights, put the yellow lenses on, and mount them behind the grill. But that is a job for another day. It's bedtime. Yeah, it is definitely bedtime. That is fucking bright, man. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna leave you with a little driving video with the ditch lights on. I'll take I'll take a back road home. And uh, beyond that, we'll see you guys later. See you on the next video. See ya. Thanks for watching. Thank you.